Hello, I'm that James guy and this is my 2013 BMW 328i X-Drive, which shall henceforth be known as Betty. We're going to call her Betty. Betty. So me and my wife bought this car four and a half years ago uh, with 75,000 kilometers on it. It now has 165,000 kilometers, so we put 90 on it. Uh, this has been our daily driver ever since, uh, family trips, all that kind of stuff. This is the car we took. So I have a lot of experience with this car and I know a lot about it. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to explain what the car is, uh, perhaps some of the differences between this and the previous E90 generation compared to this F30. Uh, I'm gonna go over some of the common issues I've, that these cars can have, what I've had to do to it, and I'm gonna explain why I like the car and why you should want one. So let's get started. So as I've said before, this is an F30 car. It replaced the E90s. F30s came out in 2012, ran up to 2019. This is the pre-facelifted one, which happened in 2017. So I'm going to be talking about the first batch, the first uh, few years from 2012, generally to 2016. Uh, so it replaced the E90. I think that this generation F30 looks much, much better, as you can see in these pictures. Lower, wider, just overall looks just more sleek. The two-door coupe and the convertible, where it is in the E90 series, was part of the 3 Series. They actually moved that to the 4 Series uh, when the F30 came out. Don't remember what they were called. Whatever pop-up message will tell you. So yeah, the 4 Series was the 2-door and the convertible versions. For the F30, BMW moved away from inline 6 for their base models. They went to turbocharged 4-cylinder, so downsized 4-cylinder turbos. It was, a, it was the first all turbocharged lineup that BMW had. And they also moved away from the six-speed automatics and moved into an eight-speed automatic. Uh, still supplied by ZF, but uh, way smoother, way nicer, a much more positive feel to it. So as soon as you get rolling, the torque converter locks up and it's basically like you're driving a manual. Very, that's what I really like about the way this car drives. Phenomenal, I love it. One of the things that these engines retained was the Valvetronic system. And if you don't know anything about that, it's uh, BMW doesn't use a throttle body to control uh, throttle on these engines. They control intake valve lift. So at a very low throttle opening, the intake valves close just a little bit, or sorry, open just a little bit. And under wide open throttle, they open more. That's how they control the throttle. Kind of neat. It makes them very clattery. Uh, very diesel-y sounding. I thought it was broken a couple weeks after I got it, but it turns out it's just normal. And uh, you can see in this little animation kind of how it works and you, yeah, you can see the operation. There's a little eccentric shaft that turns and just varies the amount of lift that the valves have. The result of this switch over to uh, the turbocharged four cylinders is a massive increase in fuel economy. Uh, I believe the E90 328i was 21 miles per gallon um, combined. This one is 26, so, and we've seen that. We've driven it. It's a very efficient car, especially get on the road. The thing gets absolutely crazy fuel economy. Here you can see the bar graph readout of just the economy. And uh, you can see the dips at the bottom are when I was on the highway. Kind of the higher parts is when I'm kind of running around town. My very, very short commute to work. What you also get is tons of torque. So the original, uh, the E90 328i in line six, it was a three liter. It had 230, 240 horsepower, not exactly sure, but 200 and yeah, 200 foot pounds of torque. Whereas the 328i in the F30 with a turbocharged engine had 260 pound feet of torque. And the crazy thing is it's all the way down to 1,250 RPM. So from 1,250 to 4,800, you get 260 foot-pounds of torque. So in traffic, it's just a blast to drive. It's effortless. You can just whip through the gears, and um, it's just a lot of fun to drive. The negative side, 
to this, uh, to going to turbocharged four cylinders is they kind of sound crappy. They don't sound like the classic BMW inline six. Yeah, it just, it, uh, as fun as it is to drive, it just does not sound good. I'm sorry, you can't get around that one. So again, this is an early F30. And so when the, the F30 came out, uh, the 320i had 181 horsepower, 200 foot-pounds of torque. The 328i, same engine, uh, I think just different pistons for lower compression for, for a bit more boost, had 241 horsepower, so 60 more horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. And then you, you could also get the 335 back then, which was an inline six, uh, three liter turbo with uh, 301 horsepower, I think 300 foot pounds. So that would be a, a bit of a rocket, but I think this car is, is an excellent compromise between economy and performance. I love it. Three trim levels uh, where there was a sport line, there was a modern line and a luxury line. I like this one. Um, it's dead giveaway is the red trim and the red um, kind of the stitching on the leather. I really think it's, it's a sharp car. I really do like this car. So now that you know what the car is, um, some of the issues. I always get asked, is this a reliable car? Should I buy it for a reliable car? No. If you want a reliable car, get a Toyota or get a Honda. Don't buy a BMW. This is not the car to buy. This is a car that makes you feel good, but it isn't reliable. Although it hasn't been that bad, so. But you don't buy a German car for reliability. Common issues of valve cover gaskets. I've never had it yet. Um, I'm assuming it's gonna happen soon. It's with all BMWs. All BMW valve cover gaskets end up leaking. Uh, oil filter housing mounting gasket. Pretty much all BMWs. This one included, it's starting to just kind of seep a little bit and uh, weep. Um, so that's something I'm gonna tackle in a video very soon. I've got the parts, I just need to do it. Early F30s. Uh, with the four cylinder had an issue with the with smoke so you'd go f <laughs> this car had that issue going a long run through the mountains couple hundred kilometers and next morning you'd go to start it up and there'd be a big poof of blue smoke it's like uncle buck started his car and it's a little embarrassing uh, what the cause of that was is oil from the turbocharger supply line would overnight seep into the hot housing and you fire it up in the morning and you blow a bunch of oil out the exhaust. So it had nothing to do with the engine itself, valve guides, some of the other things that BMWs have been known to, you know, have fail. This uh, just has to do with the turbocharger. So there was an updated line that came in 2015. It had a little check ball in the end of it. You can see in this little picture here. And yeah, basically it just stops all, as soon as the engine stops, it just, it prevents any oil from getting into the turbocharger. I bought the parts for it, kind of started to take the turbo off one day and I just kind of gave up and didn't really want to do it. I didn't feel like it, honestly. So I had it done, it was nine hour book time. It really hurt, but it hasn't done it since. Although I haven't been on a road trip since through the mountains. So I guess time will tell uh, about that one. But they put the updated lines in from the factory starting in 2015. Uh, so this car didn't have it and now it does. Uh, another issue, that these cars can have is a click in the steering. So as you go over the bump, um, bumps, you get the little clickety clackety in the steering. And you saw in a previous video, I put that new damper in, the metal damper, which solved the issue. So that's one thing I've done to this car. Oh, the big one, timing chains. So there's a bunch of BMW models that have timing chain issues. This is one of them, early F30 cars. Um, the timing chains would wear out, the upper timing chain guides would crack and break, and it could just cause a check engine light, or maybe a rattling noise, or if it's really bad, um, piston to valve contact and a wiped out engine. So I'm really hoping that, you know, playing it by ear. Funny story, we test drove a new X3, it was a 2016, same engine. I thought this car was starting to get the timing chain noise, the whining noise just off of idle, and I was starting to get a little paranoid, and we drove this X3. Lo and behold, it has the same exact sound, and it was a 2016, and it would have had all, all the latest parts and updates in it, so then at that point I went, huh, ah, must be good then. So, 
haven't really cared about it ever since. Uh, one of the things direct injected gas engines sometimes have is carbon issues. So the intake valves build up with carbon over time and I haven't seen anything on the internet that I can, you know, lots of people will sell you a carbon cleaning, but there's notorious other types of vehicles like certain Volkswagens and Audis that carbon up really quick. I haven't seen anything about these, so it seems to run good. It's got 165,000 kilometers on it. I'm going to take a look in there when I do the oil filter housing gasket, but so far so good. Uh, one of the things I'll mention is the oil change intervals. So when I reset the oil change monitor on this thing after I do an oil change, it shows 19,000 kilometers. And I, that's just a way to sell cars and sell maintenance programs that are included in the cars that you only have to do once a year. I don't, I don't like that. So. Uh, one trick for doing oil changes on these, uh, the BMW oil, the long life oil that they recommend, Castrol Edge, fully synthetic, uh, has that BMW designation on it. So that's what I use. You can get this stuff on sale for under 30 bucks for 5 liters. It does an oil change and the filter's maybe 12 bucks, cartridge style filter. So you can do oil changes on these things. I do it every 10,000 kilometers, not 19,000 kilometers. Perhaps that's why my timing chain hasn't gone yet. I don't know. Just a thought. A couple more issues I've had with the car. Uh, there's a crankcase breather diaphragm that that tore on me. And how I knew it was something was wrong was um, you'd come up to a stop and then the auto start stop on the engine. Uh, as soon as the engine stopped, it would make this <coughs> noise. <coughs> Like that. And you can see in this picture, I found this diagram torn. I searched the forums. This was the answer. Uh, BMW and most side shops wanted to replace the whole valve cover. Thousand bucks, including labor and stuff. This little diaphragm kit, local parts store, 50 bucks. Fixed. So that was that. I'll just say wrenching yourself, if you can fix stuff yourself, stuff like that. I mean, this is going to be a good, good car for you. Um, if you are leaning on taking this thing to a shop every time something goes wrong this car is gonna break you it's not gonna be not gonna be good uh, as far as maintenance goes I mean I've changed all the fluids there's a whole bunch of places for fluids in this car obviously you got oil changes I'm not counting that transmission and filter transfer case has its own oil to change front differential has its own oil to change rear differential all these different places brake fluid I flushed the brake fluid on it as well all of those things I've done. It's just the normal maintenance. I don't count that as anything special. It's just what you have to do to own a car. Oh, I guess that other issue that I've had with it is the broken turbo inlet pipe. I, you saw it in the previous video. That's another thing. I don't know if it's that common, but there is evidence of that being a thing on the internet. So that's taken care of a couple weeks ago. Some of the quirks that this car has, it's a bit quirky. Betty is quirky. Uh, when she's cold, She's really grumpy, so when you first start it up, because of that Valvetronic uh, variable valve lift system, you know, the thick oil in there with the mechanism moving around, you know, she hunts and surges and kind of jumps around, and if you would just get in this thing, put it in gear and drive it, it it's grumpy. So you just gotta, you gotta let her warm up for even just a minute or two, just to kind of get some heat into it, and then she just runs great. So there's a little quirk. Uh, the stop start on this thing, I can't get it to shut down on me automatically today. It's a bit cold outside, that's probably why. But this is a very early rendition of stop start, and it just uses the old, the regular starter. There's no special starter or anything like that. It's really abrupt and really nasty. Luckily, there's a switch above the, the engine start button, and you can bypass it. So when it starts up after stopping, like you're at a traffic light and you let off the brakes, sounds like an old farm tractor starting like it's just kind of like abrupt and nasty i'm used to it but it took a while to get used to uh another good one is the heated steering wheel i didn't know that it had a heating steering wheel for the first two years i owned this car two years i was so confused i didn't know if i should be excited or if i should be super upset because i've had it for two years and i've had cold hands the whole time but as you can see here, it's kind of on the left side of the steering wheel. 
and it's just in a weird spot and I never knew about it till I was driving one day and found it and turned it on and a message came on on the dash saying heated steering activated. Who knew? Finally, I think it's time to explain why I love the car, why you should have one, um, why you want a car like this. Uh, let's just let's just drive it already. I've just kind of been yammering on and on here. So the first thing is when you first get in this car, it just fits. I can't explain it any other way. It just fits. It's like I've owned many cars alongside this car. Ford Fusions and pickups and they, they never fit. This car, it just fits. I don't know, I can't explain it. When you're driving it, it just feels like an extension of your body, you know? It just feels right. Now, Betty's, we've broken up, almost broken up a few times. There's been a many times where I thought I was, like it was imminent bank account failure, something was gonna go here and eat all my money. I'm just kidding, no, don't break on me. Don't break on me, I don't, don't get mad. Yeah, I can explain zero to 60 times in horsepower and all that kind of stuff, and it doesn't really mean much. It's just this, it just feels, it just fits. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. There's been many times when I've owned other vehicles alongside this one, and you know, I'd start to like them. Start to like these vehicles and uh, Oh yeah, not a bad car, whatever. And then I'd get back into this one, I'd take it for a drive, and I'd be just immediately disappointed at my own vehicle. Because because of the way this car, I don't know, I, I just can't explain it. I can't, I really, really can't explain it. Uh, at the end of the day, I mean, it looks great, handles great, has lots of power, and it makes me feel, Betty makes me feel special. She just makes me feel special. That's all I got. Just so happens to be really, really busy right now on this road and I can't even really drive it, but that's okay, you know? So yeah, we've gone over what the car is. We've gone over some of the issues, common issues, that kind of thing. And uh, I've explained why you need one of these. And so I think that's it. Uh, upcoming video, I'm gonna replace the oil filter housing gasket pretty quick here. And uh, that's another thing coming. Look forward to that. Otherwise, I hope this was helpful in some way or another. And uh, we'll do this again next time. Thank you.